Hello, my name is Mickey Ostreicher and I am the General Counsel of the National Press Photographers Association. I've been a photojournalist in both print and broadcast for about 40 years and I've done training on this subject around the country for the past four or five years um, in many cities, uh, doing it in 2012 in Tampa and Charlotte in preparation for the DNC and RNC and again in 2016 in Cleveland and Philadelphia for those political conventions. Uh, this project is supported by uh, the DOJ uh, through a COPS grant and um, I think it's really important and I hope you get uh, a lot out of it. So we're going to take a look at uh, one of our first videos. It provides a good backdrop for our discussion of public recording of police. The video clips included in this presentation are meant as a learning tool. Um, they're no way meant to embarrass the officers uh, or their departments. So let's take a look at the first video. Where should I go, go Sergeant? Away. Sergeant? Go away. Go away now. Sergeant, where should I go? Sergeant, I'm asking where should I go? Dude, just go away. I don't care where you go. Go away. Okay. Go away. Go away. Okay. Give me this. What's your name? Philip. Philip. Because I want you to go away and not stand here and argue with me. Otherwise, you're about to get locked up. That's okay. That's where you want me to go. Away. All right? Leave. Leave. So I can't film no, leave. Why can't I film leave, me? because it's a current investigation and you're leaving. I, I'm That's away, why. So, so, so I'm All right, away. you're going away. Okay, I'm, I'm walking away, but I'm, I'm asking you, you know, because it's stand, Because uh, it's an active scene and you're leaving. Okay, where can I stand All right, no go place. Go, go away, no. Understand? I've been doing this for 30 years. There's nothing you can hold over my head or anybody out there. I didn't ask go you away. Over your head. I just asked All right? you to go to film the scene, and you tell me I can't film it anywhere. You can't. No. Okay. Sergeant, I called PIO. They told me to go back to the where the door's open. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. You're under arrest. So some things to uh, think about after looking at the, at the video. Um, you know, do you think this situation could have been handled differently? Uh, in, in this case, the photographer uh, was uh, arrested and charged with obstructing governmental administration back in 2011. The charges were almost immediately dropped. Uh, and then uh, he and his attorneys brought a 1983 action and successfully sued the department. It cost the taxpayers $200,000 to settle that case, and they also had to uh, do a new guidelines uh, regarding the right to record and go through annual training. So some of the things that we're going to be going through uh, during uh, this webinar are we're going to discuss civilian interest in recording police actions, we're going to review the impact of social media on police activity, we're going to specifically define first the First Amendment right to record. Uh, we're going to examine the limitations of the First Amendment right to record police activity. And we're going to also explore some police responses uh, to recording those activities. Uh, other things we're going to be looking at is we're going to explore some recommended police strategies when confronted with uh, uh, people uh, who are recording your activity. We're going to review audio recording and wiretapping laws, and we're going to define when and how recording equipment may be seized. So just think about uh, whether or not you've ever been recorded or know anybody who's ever been recorded, and uh, you know what were your reactions, what were the reactions of other officers that may have been discussed with you, uh, how did it make you feel when somebody was out there with a camera recording you? And uh, in, in those cases, uh, what actions uh, did, did you take? Lastly, what was the outcome of the situation? Just all things um, that you can think about. So, you know, one of the things um, that we're going to be talking about as well is the fact that proliferation of recording devices, uh, the fact that people are able to post almost immediately, if not live stream, 
onto social media. Um, the police officer's duty to protect constitutional rights and how this all relates to police community relations. Um, even though um, the, one of the first recordings happened back in 1991, we might want to talk a, a little bit about the Rodney King case. So following a high-speed car chase uh, while drunk, Rodney King was beaten by several officers while other officers stood by watching. Uh, a witness videotaped, back with a VHS camera, much of the beating from his balcony and sent the footage to a local news station. Parts of that footage were aired around the world. The event was really the first high-profile incident in which police officers were videotaped while performing their jobs. Recording devices as, you know, such as smartphones are, are everywhere today, and the public is now more likely um, than ever uh, to uh, record these situations, even more so than the media, because everybody's got a phone. And it's very easy, as we mentioned, to quickly post these recordings if they haven't been live streamed already uh, to social media, where they often go viral with hundreds of thousands of views. Uh, among the primary concerns facing law enforcement in today's environment is to ensure, now more than ever, that we recognize and protect the constitutional rights of citizens. This is what we pledged to do when we took the oath of office, and our relationship with the community is largely based on upholding that obligation. Uh, so recording police activity is protected um, speech under the First Amendment. Uh, there are a number of clauses in the First Amendment, um, and the ones we're going to be talking about here today are free speech and free press. Um, the public can record police when they are conducting business in a public place, and the individual has a legal right to be present. The public has the same rights to record as journalists. Um, they don't have any greater right. They don't have any lesser right. Uh, this right is not absolute but rather governed by reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions. Uh, time restrictions may be placed on persons when, for example, they would significantly affect the free flow of traffic and business. Holding a public forum in the middle of Times Square during rush hour would clearly not be permissible. Place restrictions may be imposed on locations generally considered to be publicly accessible. For example, a convention center may be restricted to the public when it is leased um, to an organization for a private function. Private property may not be used for photography without the permission of the landowner, tenant, or authorized user. Uh, a manner restriction, um, those are often associated with symbolic speech. Uh, for example, the government may restrict individuals from camping out in public parks to protest their causes. As we've seen during the Occupy movement, the government has a legitimate right to protect these public places from damage and to ensure that they are all accessible. It should be noted, however, that many local governments have increasingly chosen not to enforce these types of restrictions. In both Washington, D.C. and New York City, for example, protesters have been given great latitude to camp out for considerable periods of time in public parks block traffic, and otherwise cause disruptions in daily life. Another limitation is that the individual must have a legal right to be present at the location of recording. In most cases, recordings occur in public spaces. Public spaces are typically those places that are accessible and open to the public and where a person has a legal right to be present, such as parks, community malls, beaches, streets, and sidewalks, public buildings uh, like libraries and post offices, and the publicly accessible portions of government buildings such as City Hall. Even though places like shopping malls and other places of commerce are designed for public access and use, they may be privately owned, and a person may need the owner's permission to photograph or record at these locations. Now let's take a look at another video example of officers being recorded while doing their jobs. Take some mental notes as you watch and ask yourself what actions you would have taken and would not have taken under these or similar circumstances. Hey, 
You with him? Not at all? Okay. Got an investigation going on over here. You want to be a part of it? No, sir. I would suggest you pack up and go. Right? Stay on the sidewalk, sir. This is not public. Right? Officer Reynolds, I think it is a public sidewalk. I'm not interfering at all. We have something going on here. You're videotaping an investigation. I, I believe I'm, with... I'm allowed to be staying on the sidewalk, sir. Come over here with me. Please don't touch my bicycle, sir. Come over here. I'm, I'm right here. I don't care to get any closer. Thank you. This can be evidence in this case. You understand that, right? All I did was see some police on a, on a guy, and I thought I would pull out my phone. If you're not comfortable with that, oh, you know, no. it's we a public have... sidewalk. You know what? I got to interview you. Do you have an ID on you? Because we had a call for a bunch of people fighting with sticks. Uh huh. If you're going to sit here and videotape, that makes you part of the investigation, sir. Do you have an ID on you? No, I don't. Okay, what are you doing down here? Uh, bicycling. Okay, so what is your involvement in this? I was just concerned, sir, so concerned I stopped. For who? To... Concerned for everyone. Are you part of this for the people fighting? No, why would you have a reason to think that? That's what the radio call was for. We have a lot of people. We, had, we got a call for a lot of people fighting with sticks. Do you have an ID on you? No, sir, yes, I don't. Yes, sir, I am. Do you have any ID on you? Would you like to know my name? Because I'll yes. tell it to you. Do you have an ID? No, sir, I don't. Since you're on the sidewalk, can you go by, you know where the bicycles are at? You want me to go over there? You want me to get the side. 10 yards that way? Yeah. What you need to do is not block the passage. Okay. Go over there. It doesn't appear that I'm blocking the passage so right now, here, sir. sir. I'll get over here if you like. I mean, I'll, I'll back it up, but I don't, I don't believe I'm blocking anything. Okay. So long as the trees aren't blocking anything. Right. Good here. I mean, do I'd not, like to... Do not approach us while we're conducting the investigation. I, you know, the video understand? video shows I've been standing whatever. here. Sir, you can record whatever you want to record standing right here. When we're over but there... But not right there where that officer is. No, man. Not there. Sir, we got a call for a lot. bunch of people fighting with sticks and weapons. You are video Do you have a description? Stop, stop talking, please. You are videotaping this crime scene, right? This is a crime scene. You're videotaping it right now. That, that makes you part of it. And your little ca little camera phone, that could be part used as evidence. Do you understand? Where would you like me to move? To the very, to the, right, by, right by the street. This whole block is going to be taped off for a crime scene. Thank you are very you, much. You want to show me where to go? I sure can. Okay, okay. We'll go this way. Here we go. If you could just stand right here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Officer, have a good day, okay? Just remember, this is the official police line. If you do cross it, you will be arrested. Thank you. While the public has a right to record police, the police also have a job to do and an obligation to do it in as safe and effective manner as possible. There are many instances in which individuals, even though legally present in public place, may be required to submit to legal commands of an officer. For example, recording parties cannot position themselves in a place that would create a danger to themselves or others, including police officers. Some examples include standing in a highway, getting in the way of officers, EMS, or other emergency responders, and blocking the free flow of pedestrians. For officer safety, photographers, like other persons, should be required to maintain a safe distance from officers. To ensure that a safe distance is maintained by all persons present, an officer may request backup assistance. Also, recording individuals may be required to move from places where they could compromise police operations or endanger the themselves. However, these and related situations should not be used as a pretext to prevent recording. People also cannot enter a marked crime scene, a police perimeter, or police line that has been physically established and verbally identified to them. And in general, they cannot materially interfere with police actions or duties. So we're looking at what constitutes material interference. This has been widely interpreted by some agencies and misused to stop recordings. Interference has to be more than the act of recording in and of itself, even if you feel the recording party is annoying and unwanted. Interference has to be conduct that materially inhibits, obstructs, delays, or otherwise unreasonably affects police activities. You must have an objective, articulable reason for restricting the location from where an individual may record, or for taking actions that negatively affect an individual's ability to record. 
actions such as moving the person to an unreasonable location or blocking the recording without cause are not appropriate. If someone is interfering materially, you should direct the individual to move to a place where he or she can record but not be in the way of police business or pose a risk to their own or officer safety. Verbal criticism and derisive comments made by recording parties or others from a location that has no direct impact on police operations or safety are not actionable by themselves. Remember that the simple act of recording by itself does not constitute interference and does not justify actions to stop, block, obstruct, coerce, or threaten recording parties with citation or arrest. So when can someone who is recording be arrested? The answer to that is the very same as in any other situation. If you have probable cause to believe that a violation of the law has been committed, aside from any consideration concerning the recording, officers should be reminded, though, if they wouldn't arrest the individual without the recording device, then they shouldn't arrest the individual with the device. The use of perimeters or crime scene lines can be used to keep recording parties from materially interfering or otherwise hindering police business and, at the same time, protect the scene. However, perimeters should be designated at a reasonable distance from the crime or incident scene based on the nature of the event, not simply as a pretext to prevent recording. For instance, a barricade or hostage incident may require a much larger perimeter than, for example, the street incident that we just saw in the video. If persons who are recording are barred from an incident scene, all other persons should be barred as well. Looking at that uh, previous video, only the person recording was told to move, while the other pedestrians were allowed to walk freely through the immediate area without intervention. In some cases, perimeters are useful to help protect the privacy of victims and witnesses from video and audio recordings. Some witnesses are reluctant to cooperate if they know they are being recorded for fear of reprisals or for other personal reasons. By the same token, victims may not want their worst moments potentially posted on YouTube or some other social media site. In these cases, it may be possible and would be acceptable to shield victims from public view by surrounding them or, if possible, moving both victims and witnesses to a private area in order to get a statement. If this is not possible, a follow-up interview may be arranged at a later time but intentionally blocking only those with cameras is not appropriate. In most cases, smartphones and similar devices have audio recording capability. The question has come up in a number of incidents about whether persons are free to record conversations without permission of those individuals involved. Audio recordings without permission of police officers have been the subject of some legal concern and litigation. One notable case is that of the State v. Graber, a 2010 incident that took place in Maryland. Graber was a motorcyclist driving recklessly at high speed while also recording his actions on a helmet-mounted camera. He was stopped by an off-duty officer. Graber recorded the officer exiting his personal vehicle with a drawn handgun and subsequently posted the encounter, including the verbal exchange, with the officer on YouTube. Graber was then arrested for traffic violations and later charged with recording the conversation with the officer without his permission based on the assumption that it was a violation of Maryland's wiretapping statute. The trial court held that there is no reasonable expectation of privacy during a traffic stop, so both audio and video recording did not violate the wiretapping statute. Some of the other uh, places where this has come up uh, has been in ACLU v. Alvarez. That was a case that took place in Illinois, and it, the Seventh Circuit uh, basically came to the same conclusion, that police officers do not have a reasonable expectation of privacy in a public place, and therefore can be recorded. Illinois had one of the most stringent wiretapping statutes. It made it a criminal offense to record oral communication without the consent of all persons involved and made provisions banning the recording of officials, including the police, even in open spaces. 
the Illinois Supreme Court overturned the statute as a violation of the First Amendment in March 2014. So court decisions in Illinois, Maryland, and other federal and state court cases have made it clear that audio recordings made in public are part of the same protected right under the First Amendment as video recordings. Uh, it should be interesting to note that 12 states, including Maryland, have electronic two-party wiretapping laws that have been employed to challenge such recordings. Two-party consent means that all persons involved must agree to be recorded. However, as noted in the court in Graeber, uh, the two-party consent applies only in situations where there is a reasonable expectation of privacy by those parties, such as on the telephone and not on a public street. So now let's take a look at another example of how a law enforcement officer reacted to being recorded. This was videotaped by a civilian in April 2015. He didn't just kick the cell phone, he also stomped on it, according to this woman. She's an elementary school teacher, Beatrice Paez. She was out on a stroll on Sunday, just out exercising, and she saw some police activity in her neighborhood. She said the first thing she thought of were the confrontations that were caught by citizens in South Carolina and New York. So she whipped out her cell phone and started recording. She was four to five houses away. One of the officers broke away from the police incident, approached her, told her to stop recording. She said, hey, look, I'm on a public sidewalk. Here's how she says all of this unraveled. Then I kind of moved this way because I wanted to protect the phone, the footage. And that's when you see me struggling to keep this. And of course, he grabbed it away from me. We were struggling and he yanked it from me. He dropped it on the ground. He stomped on it many times, kicked it and kicked my bottle, broke it. And then he said, there's your phone. Doing anything wrong? <laughs> I don't think so. This is my right. It's my right. It's my constitutional right to film and I was on a public sidewalk. Now that officer is learning that everybody has a cell phone, everyone is going to record everything. This was a pretty clear example of what not to do and certainly underscored the rule that recordings and recording devices may never be destroyed even if you have a legal basis such as a warrant or exigent circumstances to seize them. Another point clearly made in the video is that recording devices are everywhere. So it is best to assume that you are being recorded times when in public and act accordingly. In this particular case, even the woman recording the incident was being recorded. Just like the general public, the media enjoys the same First Amendment protection to record police activities performed in public under both the free speech and free press guarantees of the First Amendment. In some cases, credential media personnel may be given closer access to incident scenes than the general public, but they not, may not be further restricted than the public. For example, reporters may be permitted to cross police lines in order to better record natural disasters or other events that have particular interest and value to the community. They may also be granted access to police personnel in order to gather comments or get greater insight for their stories when such access would not interfere with the duties and responsibilities of officers. On the other hand, while the media may be given additional access to a scene, they must not be made to move further away from a crime or incident scene than the general public. Short of arresting someone, seizing their recording device is not permitted except under some narrowly drawn exceptions. Absent an arrest, seizures of recording devices are presumed to be illegal under the warrant requirement of the Fourth Amendment. Even if an individual is arrested and his or her recording device is seized incident to that arrest, its contents cannot be viewed, duplicated, or otherwise examined without a warrant. The U.S. Supreme Court made this clear in its 2014 Riley decision. Uh, in that case, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that while officers may see cell phones incident to arrest, they may not search or view the phone's contents without a warrant. The rationale behind this is that cell phones contain a great deal of personal information that is not normally available in other seized property. For example, cell phones don't compare to other typical seized property such as wallets, keys, or similar personal effects.
Obtaining a search warrant is the preferred practice in nearly all cases for viewing, duplicating, or otherwise examining the media contained on a recording device. Even then, photos and video or audio recordings must never be deleted, destroyed, or altered. In addition, officers may not order the person engaged in recording or a third party to delete, destroy, or alter such recordings. As mentioned, however, there are some narrowly drawn exceptions to the warrant requirement involving seizure of cell phones. Absent an arrest, there are only two limited exceptions to the warrant requirement that may be used to seize a recording device or the device's recording medium. These exigent circumstance exceptions require the officer and or his or her supervisor to exercise sound judgment and discretion. The first exception to the warrant requirement for seizure of a recording device involves three parts, all of which must be met. The first prong requires that an officer have probable cause to believe that a serious crime has been committed. The second is that the officer have a good faith belief that the recording device contains evidence of that crime. And third, that the officer have a good faith belief that evidence will be lost or destroyed absent seizure. It is important to note that even after such seizure, a search warrant is still required before viewing the recordings. A serious crime is one involving violence that may result in serious bodily harm or death. For example, a person happens to record a shooting during a robbery. It appears to the officer by the individual's account or the account of other persons present that the video could be used to identify the perpetrator. Additionally, in the case of a journalist, it is highly doubtful that the third prong of the exigent circumstance test will ever be met. In those cases, it is advisable to obtain the contact information of the individual and caution them to preserve the evidence until the subpoena or court order for it can be obtained. Most departments require a supervisor be notified to make the final determination in seizing a device or where a journalist is involved. The other exception to the warrant requirement involves situations in which it is objectively reasonable to believe that failure to view the recording could result in death or serious bodily harm. For example, a person happens to be in a location where he witnessed and recorded a kidnapping. It may be reasonable to believe that the perpetrator and or his or her escape vehicle may be captured on the cell phone recording. But be aware that it, if it is later determined that such seizure and viewing of the recording did not meet the exigent standards, the recordings or images viewed may be excluded from evidence as a Fourth Amendment violation. But even in these situations, there are some less intrusive options that can be explored to view recordings without risking violations of the Fourth Amendment. Uh, these are some steps to take if attempting to view, copy, or seize recordings. First, the officer may ask the recording individual to voluntarily consent to allow the photos or video to be viewed. If voluntary consent is given, the officer can make a more informed judgment about the potential value of the recording. In addition, this allows the individual to safeguard video or photographs that are personal and not relevant to the incident. If the recording appears valuable, the officer can ask that person uh, for voluntary consent to take temporary custody of the recording device or the recording medium in order to make a copy of only the relevant material. Copying video that is not related to the incident is not permissible. If the recording party is not amenable to that option, the officer can ask if he or she would be willing to email a copy of the recording to a departmental email address. Once again, if the recording party permits none of these options and the situation has met the exceptions to the warrant requirement, the individual may be temporarily detained until a supervisor can arrive to make a decision on whether to make an immediate seizure and seek a search warrant to view its contents. Officers should be reminded, however, that the individual cannot be detained for an unreasonable period of time to await the arrival of a supervisor without risking a complaint of unlawful detention. Whether the recording is seized under exigent circumstances or without a warrant, it should be kept by the department only for the minimum time necessary and only copies of relevant recordings can be made. 
the recording or any other files or media on the device must never be deleted, destroyed, or altered. In addition, officers may not order the person engaged in recording or a third party to delete, destroy, or alter such recordings. It is an all too common scenario that recording parties, whether for legitimate information purposes or for other reasons, purposely engage officers in conversation and questioning, sometimes just to record their reactions. It's sometimes a situation in which an officer can be baited into debates that are unnecessary and counterproductive, or that can escalate tempers and possibly result in negative outcomes. The best approach to avoid becoming mired in one of these conversations is to deflect provocative questions and disengage from the encounter. Officers might use a program response such as the following. Acknowledging where warranted the individual's right to record police and ask legitimate questions. Informing the individual that he or she cannot interfere with the police activity no matter the type of incident involved. If the individual is materially interfering, for example, by standing too close, direct him or her to a location where he or she can still record without interfering. If the recording party persists in debating the issue or engaging, ask if he or she would like to speak to a supervisor. Remember that recording police is of itself not a crime, but the officer does not have to be so accommodating to recording parties that he or she or others are placed in danger. As noted earlier, recording parties need to stay a safe distance from officers that helps guard against any sudden physical attack. As an example, during a nighttime vehicle stop, a person decides to videotape the officers and the light from the device impedes the officer's vision. The officer may direct that the individual turn off the light or, if that is not possible, direct the individual to aim the camera in a direction that does not impede the officer's vision. It is best if the officer is able to verbally articulate these directives so that they may become part of the recording. Such circumstances should be included in any incident or arrest report. So reviewing what we've just done, first and foremost, the public and the press have a First Amendment right to record police when they are performing their official duties in a public place and where the individual making the recording has a legal right to be present. However, that right is not absolute. In particular, recording parties cannot materially interfere with officers or create dangers to themselves or others in order to make recordings. It is important to remember that the act of recording alone does not constitute interference, even if it is a distraction or an annoyance. With few exceptions, seizures and searches of recording devices and recording media require a court order or a warrant. Exceptions to the warrant requirement must be based on articulable, narrowly defined criteria that established exigent circumstances. Before making a seizure or seeking a warrant, you may use other alternatives such as seeking voluntary consent to view or duplicate the recording or requesting the recording party to voluntarily email a copy of the recording to a designated official departmental email address. Thank you very much for participating in this webinar. We hope the information provided will help you out on the street when you're being recorded.